Okay then gang, so in this lesson I mainly want to talk about a key concept in Flutter before we actually start coding anything, and that is the idea of widgets. And you can think of most things in Flutter as being a widget. Now, I mentioned in the last lesson that the argument we pass into the run app function, this my app thing, is a widget. And this widget, whatever it might be, that we pass into the run app function is known as the root widget of the application. So if we take a look at that my app widget where we define it down here, we can see that it's actually just a class. And that's all widgets are in Flutter at the end of the day, they're just classes. And you can see that this class extends the stateless widgets class, meaning that it inherits all of the special functionality that a widget in Flutter should have. The stateless part basically means that this widget won't contain any state or data which changes over time or in response to something like a user clicking on a button. For that, we have stateful widgets, but we're going to talk more about those later in the course. Anyway, you can see also that we have a method in this class called build. And we're overriding this method because it's also defined in the stateless widget class we inherit from. But this build method is what's responsible for building this widget and is ultimately also responsible for what we see on the screen. Because inside this build method, we have to return some kind of template or content in the form of a widget or a widget tree, meaning a bunch of widgets nested within each other. Now this widget or widget tree that we return is the material app widget in this case, which we're going to learn about in the next lesson. But built into Flutter, there's also widgets for pretty much any kind of content or layout feature that we might need to display on the screen. So if we want to output some text, we could use a pre-built text widget. If we want to output an image, we'd use an image widget. If we need a container for a layout, then we'd use a container widget. Or we'd use a column widget if we wanted to output a bunch of stuff in a column. So pretty much anything we ever want to display to the screen, there's going to be a widget for it. And if there's not one already built into Flutter for something, you can just make your own custom widgets as well. So then a Flutter application is primarily built from a bunch of these different widgets, which come together to form a widget tree, right? Now the root widget is the one that sits at the very top of this tree. It's the one that we pass into that run app function that we just saw in the main.dart file. Now the root widget could be called whatever you want. For example, my app, like it's named in the starts project, but it could be something else. And that root widget will have a child widget, which could be a container widget for layout purposes maybe. Within that, we might have a column widget as a child to display a column of different things on a screen. Now a column widget can have multiple children and they could be a text widget to display some text, an image widget to display an image and maybe a row widget to display a row of other things. So the row widget, just like the column widget, can also have multiple children, which are all widgets themselves. So for example, another text widget and maybe a text button widget. And then finally, we might have a footer widget at the bottom of the column as well. So you can see now following this pattern of widgets within widgets, we're building up a tree-like structure of widgets, or in other words, a widget tree, all right? And on a screen, this widget tree might look something like this. We have the root widget, my app, then inside that a container widget with some padding maybe around it, the column with text and image widgets inside it. And then we have a row widget below that with some more text and a button. And then finally a footer widget at the bottom of the column. So when you're making a Flutter app, you're essentially gonna be making a widget tree like this made up of a bunch of different UI widgets. Now, most of those widgets are going to be pre-made widgets built into the Flutter framework, like the container widget, the text widget, the image widget, column, row, etc. There's loads and loads of built-in widgets like this that we can use, but sometimes you'll also need to make your own custom widgets, which themselves will probably return a widget tree. For example, this root widget, my app, isn't a built-in widget. It's a custom widget that we create by using a class that inherits the stateless widget class. And that class contains a build function, which returns a widget tree made up of a few different widgets nested within each other. Also, in our example here, we have a footer widget. Now that's not a built-in footer widget. That's just something I made up for this example. And I would make that widget in my code using a class, much like the my app widget we saw before. And that class for the footer widget is gonna have a build method that returns another widget tree that might look something like this. It could be a row widget with three children, 
text, an image, and maybe a logo widget as well. So all I'm really doing is kind of packaging three built-in Flutter widgets into my own custom widget, and then I can just drop that widget into any other widget tree where I need it. Does that make sense? If you've ever used React before, I guess this is a little bit like making a reusable component, right? That can be then dropped into the template wherever we need it. So we're just making these kind of custom widgets. Anyway, the takeaway points here are that one, we make Flutter apps by using widgets, which form a widget tree, okay? Two, most of those widgets will be built in pre-made widgets for things like text, images, form fields, and layout features like containers, rows, and columns. And three, some of the widgets might be custom made widgets that we create by using a class with a build method, which also returns its own widget tree, okay? Now don't worry too much if that third point is a little bit foggy for now, we're gonna be looking at that in more detail as we go forward, but just know that we can make these custom widgets using a class when we need to. All right, so now we know a little bit more about what widgets are, let's have a quick look at this starter code again, just to see if we can spot any widgets in action. So first up, we've got this root widget being passed into the run app function, we've seen that already. And we can see that this root widget is actually a custom widget because we're making it right here using a class that extends stateless widget. And it also has a build method which returns a widget itself. And this is the way that custom widgets are made, right? Using a class with a build method that returns a widget or a widget tree. In this case, it returns a widget called material app. Now this is a built-in widget and we're gonna learn a little bit more about that in the next lesson. But if we scroll down the file a little bit, you're gonna see that we also have another widget called my homepage nested within it right here. And again, we can see that this is a custom widget because we're using a class to make it, which contains a build method, again, to build and return another widget tree. Now, we don't wanna go through every single bit of code in this starter project because in the next lesson, we're actually gonna be stripping this right back and starting from scratch because I think it's much easier to introduce and practice new concepts and new features that way. But just very quickly, if we scroll right down, we're gonna see a bunch of built-in UI widgets like the app bar widget, for example, the center widget, we also have a column widget, text widgets, an icon widget, etc. So all of these widgets are pre-built widgets that we can just drop into the code. By the way, these pre-made widgets are all originally made using classes, right? Just like the custom ones that we make. And each of these widgets is just us making an instance of that class and passing in some named arguments, right? In turn, that class runs its constructor takes in those arguments and it makes us an instance of that class, that widget, right? And that's all there is to it. So if you remember just one thing from this lesson, it should be that Flutter apps are made using widgets, which are just dark classes, which we can instantiate whenever we need them.